Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am about to do a video that was requested of me. I have been asked to do a video of all the modifications I've done to our 2018 and a half Jayco Seneca. So I am going to work on that right now. I've made up a list and we're gonna take a look at everything I did. Okay, so first of all, I actually made up a list. It came out to be two pages long. This page is the outside. This page is the inside. There are a few things in red. Um, those are things that I actually paid someone to do. So let's, um, I'm gonna go over this list one by one as I walk around the RV. Okay, for starters, I have a screen on the grill. Down here is just a regular window screen and that's exactly what I had there but Jayco finally came out with a black one that I went ahead and put on while we were at the uh, Super C rally. So that one is kind of cool. It really saves the radiator. You can really tell the difference from looking down in there at the radiator condition versus behind the screen. Highly recommend you all do that. Another thing I did was I changed our running fog lights. Um, I don't know if you can see them not the fog lights, the um, running lights. They were bright yellow, I've changed them to the smoke color. I changed them to smoke color because one had burned out and I really like the smoke color better than the bright yellow. I think it makes the truck look a little better. Um, come along on the side here, I have added the caps over all the holes to try and help with the wind noise. Oh, I, I skipped something here, let me... Um, do this. I added sumo springs. I have changed up the shocks to Gabriel shocks. Um, on the list is the uh, safety plus, which I will do when we get home. Um, inside the engine compartment, that's all I've really done. So let me go ahead and get that closed. Okay, I already covered the plugs on that. Um, def. We spent four nights in a Freightliner parking lot waiting on a new def head. Um, so I have built a DSS or DEF system simulator or sensor simulator, whatever it's called. So I've got that. It's actually stored and hopefully I never need to use it. I have also swapped the coolant lines going to the DEF tank. They were crossed, so they've been swapped. And I've also added, this is all underneath, a, um, a ball valve. I actually have the coolant lines, a ball valve on it and totally shut off. So I've done that on the um, DEF. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, in this basement, see these conduit Sorry about that, I accidentally shut it off. Um, see these conduit lines? They actually hang in this front basement and they were falling and getting jammed. So I actually built a uh, piece, piece of plywood right underneath the lines to hold those pipes up so that they never fall down and can catch on anything. Um, I've sealed everything along the rail here and along on the slides. Um, come back here. I raised the exhaust pipe. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but the airbags have been dumped, so um, that's why it looks close to the ground. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me get the keys out and open up a basement. All right, in the water closet, what have I done? I've put a 90 degree up here easier for the hose. I have completely removed the maciator. I kind of rerouted the plumbing a little out of the way. I could have come straight down, but I kind of liked it going that way. Um, I've also added a light. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a light up in there because this little one up here didn't do a whole lot. So I added one back there to be able to see. Um, and that's really about it on the water closet. Well, actually one more thing in there, um, both the black tank, which is behind that, and the gray tank, which is there, I put in the um, Horst Miracle Probes, which I'm sure you've all seen. I put those in and um, I do believe they made a wonderful dis or difference. So um, this is one of the things that I paid someone to do. There was a Truma on-demand water heater here. And as far as I'm concerned, it was a piece of junk. I hated how much propane it used and how much water it wasted. Um, so I went ahead and put in a Suburban, or had, 
someone put in a suburban 10 gallon gas slash electric water heater. Um, love that much better. Let's continue walking around. Um, Stone Guard. I manufactured that or made that myself. Um, went to go buy one. It was really expensive and was able to make that one for about $22.50 if I remember correct. So I've added that. Um, spare tire carrier. As you can see, it's purchased by Roadmaster. Um, but I carry a spare tire back here. Uh, not everyone carries these 22 and a half inch spare tires. But, um, oh, hey, look, Wandering Peaches, follow us, please, on Instagram or YouTube. Uh, what else? Have, oh, the TPMS repeater. I have a repeater that I installed up behind the back wall um, in between the house and this back wall to uh, repeat the TPMS off of the toad. So, uh, and the last thing back here is a ladder. I did not install the ladder. Uh, Jayco actually installed that for free for me because we had so many problems when we first got the rig. And um, I went to Middlebury and parked it there and said, we have a problem. And because of all the issues we had, they offered to put that ladder on for us. Um, there's a whole bunch of changes up on the roof. I will get to that in a minute. I'm gonna continue coming around um, the side of the RV and then I'll go up on the roof um, at the same time I had that Truma water heater removed on-demand water heater removed and 10 gallon one removed I added an extra water tank I had to cut this in half so I had access to it get it out um, by adding that extra water tank it's tied directly into perfectly level with the main water tank brought us up to 100 gallons of fresh water that we carry uh, nothing special it fills at the same time the main tank fills it drains at the same time the main tank drains, uh, gets used from the pump. So that brought us up to 100 gallons of fresh, which really comes in handy in our boondocking. Um, air dump. I put a uh, solenoid and air dump valve and ran wires up front. Uh, so when we come in the park, I hit a button and boom, we drop out all the air before I hit the level. Um, barbecue grill. I had this on my old 06 Seneca and loved having a barbecue grill that I could just hook on here and it plugs into the propane tank. Um, fortunately, the why, I, why I put it here is I wanted it under the awning so that I can barbecue while it's raining. Um, I added exterior fans on the refrigerator. More about that later when we get inside. That's to keep the uh, heat out of the area there. Um, awning. I added a motion sensor up in there so when the awning's out, if the wind blows too much, it will um, pull the awning in automatically. Uh, and last thing I think out here is I replaced this. It's still a Bauer, but it's the next version after what they did. And this one is Bluetooth, so I can lock it and unlock it with my phone or there's a proximity sensor so that as I'm walking up to it, it'll automatically unlock. Um, the other one died on us, so I went ahead and did that. All right, let's go climb the ladder and go up on the roof. And one more thing in the basements here. Um, we went out and bought a uh, Dometic 3.3 cubic foot refrigerator freezer. We run both sides in a freezer typically. Um, but the unique things about these is they're either 12 volt or 120 volt. And if it's running on 12 volt and it detects 120, it automatically switches. So I have installed a 12 volt plug up there and I plug it into the 12 volt plug and it runs on 12 volt. I also put in a receptacle for 120 volt. So it runs on 12 volt while we're running down the road. And as soon as we plug in or fire up the Jenny, it switch automatically switches over to 120 volt. So I do have a uh, freezer that I put in the basement of the RV that runs on either orb. And I did that by adding a couple of plugs. Let's see what else we got. Boy, oh boy, is it filthy up here. Um, it is kind of warm. Oh, I never told you. We're down in Mission, Texas for the winter. Um, this is February. I'm wearing shorts. It's 80 degrees out. Um, as you can see, there's palm trees everywhere. So that's why the air conditioner is running. So let's start off here. Um, I added an old school crank up antenna. And on that old school crank up antenna, I've got um, a cell phone booster. That really, really works well, especially down at deer camp. Turn the handle, it comes up, and then you can rotate it to point it towards your cell tower. 
Um, obviously the next thing is I've got 370 watt panels for a total of 510 watts of solar. Um, the uh, vent pipe for the tanks I put on to 360 makes a huge difference. I added the max air um, over the vent cover uh, for the inside the bathroom. Uh, what do we got up here? I have a cell or Wi-Fi booster. That's what that antenna is. Um, I'm having some issues with it. I may R and R that with something newer. That one is several years old. I bought that probably 10 years ago. We also had it on old ground. Um, and that is the traveler for the DirecTV uh, HD self-seeking uh, cell or uh, satellite antenna. We have since dropped. Uh, direct TV so we don't use that anymore um, that is one thing that I paid to have done had that one put on and up here you can see the um, smoke colored running lights so that's it on the roof oops that wasn't it on the roof um, I did these solar panels on my own and I don't know if you can see but there's um, small aluminum metal brackets right there and there the reason I did that and these big knurled, these things are hinged and I've got brackets. I can actually raise them up and I've got three different positions. Oops, get my phone out of there, my hand out of there. I got three different positions depending on where we're at latitude wise and the time of year. So these three are designed to be tilted. Um, I just a couple of thumb screws, lift them up, thumb screw the uh, angle bracket back in and they're at the proper angle. We're at full hook up here down in. Um, Mission, Texas and the Rio Grande Valley, so I don't even have them turned on. Alright, that's done with the roof. Alright, we're up in the cab. Um, kind of dark in here because we have our screens up. Because um, we are camping. So, where do I start in here? Um, first thing I did, not the first thing I did, but in the cab, is I carpeted. This was an 18 and a half. This was just a solid piece of rubber. I pulled out these chairs, put in carpet. Um, just some carpet I had left over from one of the apartments and cut it all up, put it in here properly and it works perfect, keeps it quiet, keeps it a little cooler. Um, let's see what else I did. Uh, Bluetooth. I put in, um, not the Bluetooth, the uh, Bluetooth uh, ECM, Blue Fire. Man, I brain dead there. Um, so I do have the unit that plugs into the uh, port down below and I display everything up here on the ECM. The Blue Fire is something absolutely awesome. You need to get that if you don't have that. Um, I have a TPMS. As I mentioned earlier, I have a dash cam, which is currently down. Um, I swapped some buttons on here. Uh, the door lock was way over here. So I put Angel's window control over here. So she has control of her window and I put the door locks over here so I can easily reach them as I'm pulling in and out. Um, I mentioned earlier I put in an air dump. Here's the air dump switch. So when the ignition is off, this will solenoid, I can engage it. It will not engage while the ignition is on. Um, checklist, everyone has to have those. Uh, six port hub. It runs on the cigarette lighter. The, 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 oops, there you go. The RV came with one USB hub. Uh, I got a six porter that plugs into the cigarette lighter and just stays there. And that controls all the stuff from the Blue Fire, the TPMS, the dash cam, everything else. This is something I paid to have done. I had a CB put in. That is not something I did on my own. And I think that's about it for up here in the cab. Um, so let's move on back. Oh, no, there is one more thing. You can't see it, but there is a light down here right above the accelerator pedal that turns on when the towed brakes are on. It's part of our uh, braking system called the uh, dual play and stay. Um, it gives you feedback while well, I ran the wire all the way up here so I know when the brake lights or the brake pedals being pushed on the towed um, from up here just by having a little red light down here. All right, let's continue to move on. There's Libby. She's kind of warm because I just shut the air conditioners off because it was too noisy in here. Um, I did, an original repair on some of this on the um, 
in here. I pulled these panels off behind the TV, pulled that all out in the fireplace, and all my screws were broken in there. So I uh, used some strong 3M glue and re-glued the cab and re-screwed everything in there and put this back together. Um, it's starting to squeak again and I'm going to do the wing wall. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've seen videos on the wing wall repair um, or the forum. So I will be doing the wing wall. Wing wall. Now this is something else. It's just a, a little piece of cloth that we have to close off the cab. Um, here, below the TV, this was all wood. All the electronic components in there overheated. So I cut the piece of wood out here and I put in a black screen and I put in vent holes up here so that uh, heat can rise up and get out from there and not overheat the electronic components. Also, the remote control works now um, where it didn't work before. Um, let's see. Over here, I put a receptacle here right underneath the light switches. That receptacle, the wire runs down into the basement and plugs into one of the basement receptacles. So that during normal use, it runs off of um, a normal 15 amp. Actually, I think uh, I think it is a 15 amp circuit. But because it plugs into that, and I use number 12 wire, I can actually unplug it from the receptacle in the basement and plug it directly into the post. And what that does is, when we're on like a 30 amp circuit, I can plug into 30 amp for the whole house, and then that plug has its own 20 amp circuit. So I can run a space heater or whatever I need to run off of that without affecting the rest of the house in the 30 amp cycle. That is the um, internal antenna for the Weeboo cell phone booster. It uh, hooks on there, it's got plenty of cable, it comes up and I set it up here next to our little speaker. Um, I also did the, uh, I think I mentioned I put in the motion detector, but I also put in the carefree awning controllers down here so that I have access to it with Bluetooth. I can rate, put out and bring in the awning, control the lights, dim the lights, with, all with my phone on the Blue Fire. Um, let's swing over to this side. Over here, uh, this one's really kind of cool. I built a little shelf. Here's one of my little snap pad winnings from... There we go. I designed it so that I can take it on and off. And all this really is, is a cocktail shelf. So when I'm sitting in the evening in my recliner, I put my cocktail there. Um, something else I did, if you look at all the windows on the uh, Jayco Senecas, you're open or you're closed. On the sliding windows, I put an intermediary stop so I can leave it open about an inch. I did the same thing in the bedroom. Um, let's see, what else have I done here? Um, obviously this is a big one, uh, the recliners. I cut out the, um, a piece of wood or the front of the center of the recliner and built a cat box. Uh, Libby needs to have a place to go pee and poop and that was the only place we could put it um, without it being in the shower or in the bathroom and always having to move it and make everything uncomfortable. So let me check my list real quick here. Carefree, receptacle. Um, okay, let's go to the refrigerator. There's some things over here. Uh, one of the things I did was I added the fan in the very back to keep the fins cool. Uh, very common thing. Uh, what I also did that a lot of people have no idea on or have talked about doing, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a switch back here. What that switch does is it takes the refrigerator from normal operation which means 120 volts if 120 volts are available or gas if not um, if i flip that switch it runs off the inverter which means when i'm driving down the road i don't have to be burning propane it uses a solar or the alternator and the refrigerator runs on 120 from the inverter which gives me one huge advantage is the ice maker still works while driving down the road or while we're boondocking and have solar power um, also up here is the Wi-Fi boost. Back there is the cell boost. Uh, that's the old um, Traveler HD antenna for DirecTV. So I had to replace that receptacle back there uh, to put in a two-point receptacle as opposed to a one. And let's see, I think that is it. 
up here in the house. Let's, uh, we'll go to the back half of the house. All right, one more thing before we go to the back half of the house. Um, the AC duck uh, diverter. Um, it was a mess up in there, especially the holes going into the duct work. I had to completely clean those all up. They were probably about that big. Got them all cleaned up and retaped them all. There's lots of YouTube videos out there on that and lots of information on the forum about it. But it's the angled so that the air goes smoothly into the two duct works. It really increased the airflow from the air conditioners. Um, so let's go on back here. Uh, one of the first things I did is I got rid of that short round toilet and put in an um, extra height elongated toilet. Very important. Uh, that was a very good job on that one. That was one of the things that I was really happy about. Um, let's see. In here, one of the things I did was this holder for the shower it was plastic. It broke almost immediately. I got a metal one and put a metal one in. I also replaced a valve. Here's the, um, whoops, I dropped. Here's the on off valve. I got a metal one, a really decent one for when you're boondocking and you're taking Navy showers and got rid of that cheap little plastic one that was down here that never actually shut the water off. Um, very important to be able to shut the water off. All right, what else? Um, in here, just recently, I made this little shelf riser. This actually had no lip here, kind of like it does down here. And what that allowed us to do is things don't fall off. So all I did was just add a piece of wood here. No big deal on that one. Um, all right, up top. This is my watchdog. This is my power uh, 50 amp, 120 volt uh, monitor. It drops off at low voltage, everything like that. It's a power watchdog. You can go Google it up. Um, but it gives me all that information. This is my solar controller. Uh, this is hardwired to the solar controller in the basement. This is Bluetooth to the watchdog in the basement. Here's our normal electrical panel. Uh, the only change I put on here is this used to be the Truma uh, water heater on off. Um, because I got rid of that, I now have the Suburban 10 gallon gas or electric. And when we're heavy electricity, why use my gas like you did on that? But what I did with the switch is I ran a relay under the bed and I have a 200 watt ceramic heater in every basement that has water. And I now have basement heat. It was uh, pretty simple to install and I used this switch here to turn on all the basement heat. Um, I think that's it for in here. We're just about done. Let's um, head back here. What else have we done back here? Uh, washer and dryer. That is something that we paid to have done. Um, I did not put in the washer and dryer. However, what I did do with the washing machine is, I don't know if you have used these Splendides, but I have many a time seen clothes inside here still dry as it goes around because it uses so little water. Spent a lot of time on the phone with Splendide and it's a government regulation. So I actually ripped the thing completely apart and I put in some momentary contact switches so I can add cold water or hot water to the washing machine while it's filling for the cycle. So, hell with the government. I put as much water in there as I want. Um, I do not believe the clothes are actually getting cold. Uh, let's see, what else have I done back here? Again, the AC inverter. Uh, the windows, as you can see, they're at the partial right now, only up a little bit uh, because I put those notches in there so the tack can work. Also, on the bed slides in and out, but the pedestal does not slide in and out. And Angel couldn't get in here. So what I did, one-handed, I put in a hydraulic bed lift. I've done a video on this before on a repair of it, but I now have hydraulic lifts on here. The whole bed slides in and out with these rails um, and the hydraulics. So it still goes in and out just like it's supposed to but I can now lift it and close it with one hand. So I think that's it that I've done. Um, oh, there's a safe. Um, I permanently mounted a safe. It's screwed to two different walls and a floor. There's a safe in here that's um, completely solid to the RV. And that's about it. So let's come back up here. Um, let me flip this around. Actually, I'm just gonna hit stop and well, let me see if I can flip it like this. Oh, look at that. I was able to flip it without stopping the video. Um, there's the modifications. <laughs> like I said, I've got two pages 
of the uh, modifications I've done, one for the inside, one for the outside. And um, it's taken me five years to do all these things. I've got a few more things I want to do, like the wing walls and the super sear and what have you. So um, I'll probably be doing videos on those. So anyhow, if you have any questions on any of these modifications, please don't hesitate to leave a contact or a comment or contact us, and I'll be happy to give a lot more detailed information on any of it. Um, and for the couple of people that actually requested this video, I'm sorry it took me a year to get this video done. Um, I just have some time on my hands here while we're winter texting down, winter texting down here in Mission, enjoying the uh, the warmth instead of the cold up north. So, um, if you haven't already. Um, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, please, please go ahead and subscribe. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, one thing I do need to mention is nothing in here is promoted. I do all my own research and I buy all my own products. Uh, there's no, no products in here or any modifications in here that um, I got paid for. So um, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. And again, please subscribe if you haven't. Talk to you all soon.